Let me tell you about somebody that I want to introduce to you that you know. His name's Steve. <laughs> He's hiding out there somewhere, you know, Steve, Steve Spurrier. Now I'm going to tell a Steve Spurrier story. I have consulted with various people about whether I should tell this story or not. And there's kind of a difference of opinion, but I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> because it illustrates what I mean when we're talking about high-level performance. Now, I'm not a big football guy, really. I mean, I don't know nothing about football. I'm a historian. You know, I got no talent. I'm uncoordinated. I can't play golf. I mean, what do I know? Nothing. On the other hand, I've watched a lot of football games, and I'm there up in the box, and I'm watching our football team perform with Steve out there on the sideline in the good old days when he used to send in the signs. You remember the signs and the symbols? And they'd hold up a banner, and, and Steve would do this, and the quarterback would look like that, and somehow something would happen, okay? <laughs> now, uh, so we're up there, you know, we're someplace, I don't know, in the middle of the field, right? And they're all settled up, and there's a, bam, we have the thing, and, and the play goes nowhere. So now we're second and 10, okay? Second and 10, not terrific. Well, all of a sudden, I see Steve down there on the side, and all of a sudden, he's doing this, and I mean, going great guns, making these signs and symbols, some kind of magic, I don't know what it is. And the quarterback's looking at him, and he's making the symbols, and the clock's ticking away. And so the quarterback goes out, and they line up, and, they, and everybody's not quite sure where they should be. And the play goes off, and we lose four yards. So now we're second and 14. OK. And so everybody says, oh, God, what the hell's he thinking? Right? And so then he's out there. He's still doing it again. The quarterback's looking, and he's still doing it again. And so, well, OK, quarterback shakes his head. He goes out there. They line up. They do it. Bam. Didn't work. Right? Sack the quarterback. All right, now we're third, all right, and I don't know what the hell we are, third and uh, 14, third and 18, I don't know, all right, and we're sure this is, uh, come on, Steve, play some decent play that everybody understands, maybe there's a chance here, okay, and, oh, no, he, uh, and it goes, uh, he does the play, now we're fourth and 18, okay, time for the kicking team, no kicking team, there's no kicking team, they all stay on the field. Steve's still doing this kind of stuff. The quarterback's looking at him like this. They line up and God damn it, the play's perfect. The ball sails out there. It picks him up on the sideline in for a touchdown. Now this is what you call inspiration, creativity, endurance, strength, courage, craziness. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's an inspiration that recognizes that you have to have talent you have to have people who are able to take a risk. You have to have people who are willing to push and shove and take the advantage of the opportunity before them. And that's why the University of Florida is one of the greatest places in America. Go Gators! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Steve Spurrier. <laughs> Mr. President, I don't remember those first three downs, but I remember that fourth down play. That was a good one. Uh, but anyway, it's nice to be here. It's good to be around this crowd. Uh, a lot of you were here when I played, and I think all of you were here when I coached in the 90s. So this is sort of my group of people. Uh, but I thank God every day for directing my path from East Tennessee down the University of Florida. Met my wife, Jerry, here. Been married over 50 years, and all the good things that have happened to me was because I came to the University of Florida. Thankfully, uh, Coach Graves came up East Tennessee and got me down here. Uh, I was on the radio. I do this serious college sports. And this morning, I was actually on this morning, and this listener said, who was the athletic director that hired you at, at the University of Florida? I started thinking, man, I said, I, wasn't an athletic director that hired me. There was two presidents that hired me, an interim president, Bob Bryan, and an incoming president, John Lombardi. So I got hired by the top dogs uh, here at the <laughs> University of Florida. And it was sort of interesting, the interview, I was supposed to fly up to Baltimore. Uh, president Lombardi was at John Hopkins, and I was at Duke. And we had a snowstorm or something, couldn't get up there. So I interviewed by phone uh, with President Lombardi, and I think he told uh, President Bryan, uh, this dude's OK, let's go ahead and hire him, something like that. So uh, it was fun. Uh, just a quick story about the 90 season. Dean Lancelotti, I love, love being around him for so many years. But we were actually under investigation, if some of you remember, way back in 90. And uh, we got our penalty in the middle of the season. We, we'd beaten Alabama and another team. I think we were 2-0. and 0. 
And the penalty was we were ineligible to be called SEC champs because we couldn't go to a bowl game. So the question, do we appeal the decision or do we accept it and move on? So we had a big powwow meeting. President Fox, you'd enjoy this meeting. We were all in there, President Lombardi, vice presidents, lawyers, uh, Jeremy Foley, Orangeburger, they, we had every big shot on campus in there. And uh, we're talking about should we take this penalty or not? President Lombardi, good common sense man, he said, wait a minute, this is very simple. If we win the SEC and go to the Sugar Bowl, we should appeal this decision right here and move on. And uh, he said, if we can't win the SEC and not go to the Sugar Bowl, we take the penalty and get it out of the way and go on to next year. And uh, so they all looked down to me, looked down to me. Coach Spurrier, what do you think? Can we win the SEC this year? And I said, well, President, you know, we, we're pretty, we got a good team. We got a real good team. We got to go to Tennessee. Georgia's not very good this year. Auburn's decent, but we got them at home. I, I think I said, I think we can go six and one at worst. And that usually gets a piece of the SEC championship. So uh, we were hee-hawing around there. And then Dean Lancelotti spoke up, and he really was smart when he said, time out, everybody, time out. We haven't won the SEC in 57 years. <laughs> and we're 2-0, and and we think we're going to win the SEC. <laughs> so every time I saw the dean after that, I said, like the Bible says, ye of little faith. <laughs> but uh, he, he was right. He was probably right. But anyway, I tell you what, by winning it that year, that 1990 team, they made it easy for those other teams. I really believe it may have been the best thing uh, to happen to us because we won it five of the next six years and then won another one in 2000. But uh, anyway, that was, uh, that was uh, pretty neat how that all transpired. And uh, certainly we had wonderful players in those days. And uh, we, we signed a quarterback in the uh, 92 class. Uh, fortunately, we redshirted him, and uh, uh, Danny had a chance to play the next four years, and uh, I guess we achieved about the most in football that we ever had. Uh, but I go back to the 1993 Kentucky game. Danny was a freshman. Uh, he and Terry Dean were sort of both playing a little bit. As most of you know, I'm not afraid to take one out, put the other one in, see how they're doing. <laughs> and uh, so we're at Kentucky, and... Uh, I think Terry may have started the game. He threw about two or three interceptions. So I put Danny in, and he threw about two or three. And I put Terry back in. He threw another one. So we had, we had seven interceptions. And uh, I'm standing over there. There's about a minute and a half left in the game. I didn't know which one to put in. I mean, they, they both were just tossing it to the other team. And Danny comes by. He looks at me. He looks at me, says, Coach, we can win this game. I'm ready. I said, well, you're in the game. Go get him. <laughs> and sure enough, that's the game he hit uh, Chris Doring on the touchdown. And uh, that, that was a big play because we won that game. Uh, we actually lost an SEC game that year but went on and, and won the championship uh, in Birmingham at the SEC game. But uh, Danny, uh, obviously, I think he's the best quarterback that ever played here. I know Tim Tebow was awfully good. Uh, but Danny, uh, Danny and his guys won it all four years he was here and, and won national championship. And uh, he's probably a better person uh, than he was the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. So come on up, Danny, and say a few words. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. Uh, I'll tell you, it's been said several times, but uh, the decision to come to Florida to get a chance to play for you uh, changed my life. It was the best decision I, I, I ever could have made. And um, I remember really early on, one of those first interceptions, maybe in that game I threw, I, I thought the receiver had sort of run the wrong route, which led to the interception. So with the, we were wondering who's going to get in trouble. Was it me or the receiver? And I got to the sideline, and he said, Danny, it's not your fault. I'm like, oh, he goes, it's my fault for putting you in there. You're out. <laughs> so, uh, but what, what a lot of people don't always uh, remember is, is as a young college, uh, high school athlete, looking at what school to go to to play football, being recruited, clearly the chance to play for Coach Spurrier was a, a huge part of my decision to come here. But a lot of people don't remember, the, the last thing I said when I made my announcement was, if I weren't a football player, 
And I were looking at these schools that I'm looking at, there's no question, as a student, I would go to the University of Florida. And so being here has been uh, an amazing, um, the friends that I've made, the people that, that I love that have been such a dear part of my life through hurricanes and illnesses and all the different ups and downs, it's been great. And um, I was thinking about tonight, and there was one uh, a real short, quick, quick memory that I, I wanted to share. I, it was shortly after my time uh, as a Gator, and you know, when you have success, a lot of times people will say, why don't you write a book? Why don't you write a book about your, your way of success? And so I, I thought about that, and they really encouraged me to think of a unique, something different that wasn't common. Like, what's different about you that maybe led to your success? So I, I thought a lot about my life, and one of the things I recall at several key moments was a voice in my head, this little self-talk voice. And I can remember being young, running the 100-yard dash and wanting to run that so bad. And hear the vo I can remember this voice saying, you are such a good runner. You are so fast. You're a great runner. And I remember, you know, wanting to take a test in third grade and almost wanted to cheat. And this voice in my head said, you know, don't, don't look at that girl's paper. You know, you're a good kid. You're a smart kid. And so at least that minute I didn't uh, look across. But I remember several other stories in my life um, where these things were happening. And so that's what it is. I'm going to write a book about talking to myself and help other people encourage themselves to talk better themselves. It sounded like a great plan, and it all changed early one morning when I was walking down the hall after having our first child, Jonah, and my mom came to visit, and she was there. She was helping. And as I walked by, I realized my mom was in the nursery with my, you know, three or four-day-old baby, and I could hear some things as I walked by the hall. I heard things like, Jonah, you are such a good boy. <laughs> Jonah, you are so strong. You are so wonderful. And I'm like, I've heard that before. And I came back a few minutes later, and, and I hear it again. You are so strong. You're so... And I started laughing because I, I was starting to figure out what was happening. But then even 10 or 15 more minutes, I came back later, and she's sitting there holding my son over and over. You are such a good boy. I love you so much. You are so beautiful. You are so strong. And it hit me. It wasn't my voice. <laughs> Duh. It was my mom. It was my dad. It was my, my pastors. It was my coaches. It was Coach Spurrier most of the time. It was, <laughs> it was, the, it was I think, the, the voice of God speaking in. And it wasn't, it wasn't me, like who, who I had become wasn't just because of what I had done or my effort or my energy or my, or my mind. It was those that had gone before me pouring into. And that's really what tonight is about, right? We are celebrating. There's so many things that are about to happen. And where Florida's going, I cannot imagine and believe it. But why are we here? Because of what's happened down here. Because of all the different folks that have poured in. Because of the John Lombardis and all the different folks along the way. And, uh, and so I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. And as I get older, I'm, I'm more able to look back and say thank you. So back to you, Dr. Lombardi. Thanks. God bless. Go Gators. <laughs>